A lack of information around addiction and mental health issues has led to a lot of confusion. Heroes in Recovery is here to set the record straight and break the stigma through the power of storytelling and by celebrating the heroic efforts of those who walk this road of recovery every day. Our movement is built on the personal journeys of survivors, shining a spotlight on the disease of addiction and creating a global community of support. Go to heroesinrecovery.com to share your story, read hundreds of others, or join us for a 6K race. Together, we can break the stigma. That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Yo, what's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to Humans for bringing us in, and thanks to you for supporting the show. Always proud to bring you Sober Guy Radio from Northern California. Thank you to everybody for supporting the recovery movement, especially those out here in Sacramento to the Bay Area, down to San Diego and across the map. Uh, It's really an honor to represent. I'm proud and humbled to be a part of this movement and uh, offer something up to help end the stigma of addiction. Uh, So thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. Uh, we have a couple of announcements, and then we're going to get to our guest today. Super stoked to announce Sober Guy Radio will be podcasting from the Innovations and Recovery Conference down in San Diego. That's April 3rd through the 6th at Hotel Del Coronado. Um, it's, uh, you, can, you can get tickets to it as well if you're interested in checking it out. Uh, and we're also working on possibly broadcasting that live. So uh, you'll be able to tune in live through the conference and hear what's going on here, some of the guests. And uh, it's really a great event, beautiful hotel. If you haven't seen it, check it out. You can go to foundationsevents.com slash innovations in recovery and you can get more information there. Um, Also, one of the tools that I like to use is Transitions Daily. It's a daily AA email delivered right to my inbox. And it's really a great way for me to start my day. It only takes me about five minutes to read and it it really is one of my favorite tools. And you can check that out by going to dailyaaemails.com. I need to take a breath real quick because I'm talking too fast because I've already drank like three cups of coffee this morning. It's an early morning session. I love it. We're up. We're rolling. We're doing the thing. Excited to start the day. That's how it should be. Okay, before we get to our guest today, um, and we have some some great things to talk about, really excited to introduce you to him. Um, I want to tell you about a new treatment program called DXRX. Now, DXRX provides access to alcohol treatment specialists, safe medication, and ongoing monitoring for people who want to stop or reduce their drinking. And it's all done through a simple phone app. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about it and how it works. Here's what will happen on your first appointment. Before you start the program, you'll meet with the physician who's a specialist in addiction. You'll discuss your goals for drinking, your health history, any concerns you might have. And then the physician will create a personalized care plan for you. They monitor your progress with a breast, with a breathalyzer a breathalyzer, that'd be a nice one, right? A breathalyzer and the DXRX mobile app. Um, And the physician will also recommend safe, effective, non-habit forming medicine. If if you're into that, that will ease the alcohol cravings depending on where you're at. Uh, Now, I've said this before, the DXRX team, Jess and I have met with them. They're a great group of doctors and professionals right here in the Bay Area. Um, And uh, they're they're really doing some things to work to uh, change change how we look at it at addiction and alcoholism and uh, really it's really a cool thing so check it out go to that soberguide.com you'll see the DXRX logo stronger than alcohol on the right hand side you can click on that to get started today all right let me take a breath real quick breathe in Raymer breathe out we're gonna get going to our guest today and today's guest is Lou Redman super stoked to have him on Lou reached out uh, about a month ago and I'll tell you what, this dude has a passion for what he does. And that's part of the reason that uh, that I made the decision to connect with him and bring him on the show today. It's very obvious. And I think you'll hear that when we get the conversation started. Uh, Lou is a motivational messenger and he's on a mission to show people the greatness they have within them. He's written a book about letting go of drug and alcohol addiction and finding his life's purpose. 
Uh, he's now an inspirational speaker and also runs meditation groups aimed to help people tap into their inner inner guidance and find their purpose, which is such an important thing. Um, you know, if you find your purpose in life, let me tell you, life changes dramatically. Uh, Lou's been sober now for uh, two years, and uh, he's here today to join us to talk a little bit about what he's been up to and uh, his book and some of his story, which is super inspiring. So Lou, it's great to have you today, man. How are you? Shane, I am awesome, man. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, man. I'm super pumped to have you. Um, some good things going down now. Are you down in San Diego? Did I catch that right? You know what? I was in San Diego for four and a half years. I actually just moved back a few months. I just moved to New Jersey a few months ago. It's actually where I'm from. Got it. Got it. Okay. So you're originally from, from New Jersey. You moved out to San Diego. Did you go to college out there? I went to college. No, I actually went to college at Penn State in uh, Pennsylvania, and then I, I moved out to San Diego right after college. Quite a bit of difference uh, in weather uh, from New Jersey to San Diego, huh? And people think I'm, I mean, they already think I'm crazy, <laughs> but now they think I'm even crazier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice place down there. Uh, we're going to head down there, like I mentioned uh, in the, in, in the uh, opening monologue segment. Uh, yeah. We're going to be down there in April and. I have some family down there, and uh, it's it's really a beautiful place, man. My my kids love it, so they're super stoked to go down to the beach and whatnot. But uh, some nice golf courses too. I know you're into the golf, uh, or you were in the golf industry previously, or how did that work for you? Still playing golf, or what's up with that? Yeah, I mean, I I, I play maybe like once uh, once or twice a year now, but I was mm. actually went to college for for to to be a, a golf uh, to do the golf pro uh, golf pro management. And, really, and I decided. Yeah, I decided that. I didn't want to work at a country club and I just wasn't for me. So I wanted to kind of move into the business side of it. And San Diego had all the, the golf club manufacturer, like the companies there. Yeah. So that's what, that's actually what brought me out to San Diego. Got it. Got it. Okay. There's some nice courses out there too. I'm, oh, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm too terrible to play any of them probably, but <laughs> um, I have a good time. I have a good time playing some golf, man. It's funny though. Now how, um, I think I was talking with somebody on the show about this too, uh, about how I used to play golf just to get hammered, really. Like I, that would be the thing, like to get the homies together, to go out, like to oh, smash man. around in the car. And I mean, we would play some golf, of course, too, but we were playing drinking games during, you know, during the oh, session yeah. or, um, you know, and don't get me wrong. I had some great times out there too, but I usually quit like about the 13th or 14th hole just because it was, I was over it. You know what I mean? And now it's so funny, like being sober, I actually go out and and relax and and well somewhat relax it depends how I'm playing but uh try to like have a good time and enjoy the actual game of golf though you know what I mean Exactly man we can get into drunken sports too I <laughs> I used to when I was a caddy in high school it was like we 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 get out on the field or the the course and it's like one beer a hole and it's like you you drink like <laughs> In like nine holes, like two and a half hours, and you're just you can't even see the freaking ball. Oh yeah! But somehow I still was like decent at it, even really drunk. <laughs> yeah, I know it is kind of funny. Like uh, my my buddy and I, we called it Mario Golf. So we would get super super stoned, and we'd just continue that on the golf course. And it was really literally like we felt like we were uh, like in Super Mario or something playing <laughs> playing golf. But I don't know. I would have some good shots at times, I got to say. So I don't know. That's what keeps people coming running. back. That's what keeps you coming yeah. back to golf is those one like, oh, I got it. And then yeah. oh, and then you lose like 10 balls after that or, uh, you know, you're throwing club. I'm, I've, I've been known to throw a club or two. I got to say, I'm kind of <laughs> embarrassed that it's been it's actually been a while since I've done that. But uh, uh, it's a it's a frustrating game, but it's a fun game. And I think it. I think it does apply, uh, you know, to life in in a sense where uh, and and recovery, in the fact that, you know, I expect myself to go out and just play like this phenomenal game of golf, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm I play maybe maybe on average if you if you scaled it out over a year maybe once a month, like and that might be you know twice in one month and then not play for another month or two and then maybe three times. So, uh, but point being, I'll go to play. And then expect to have this great game and go out there and just not play very well. And it's like, man, I got to, I got to practice. I got to put the time in It's the same kind of thing with, uh, with recovery. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's transition this. I could sh sit here and talk about golf all day, man. So uh, what, what's up with you? I know you just, uh, you, you just put a book out. Um, I want to get into a little bit about uh, your backstory and uh, sitting on on your porch, I think it was, and the police coming, thinking you're about to commit suicide. I uh, thought that was interesting. Uh, take take us back, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. 
Yeah, man. So uh, I'd say, you know, growing up, I had a pretty good, pretty good childhood raised in a small little Italian town. Um, you know, my, my, my dad's side, you know, where I got the, I guess the, the alcohol tendency, my dad's side of the family, we always struggle with depression. Probably everyone on my dad's side is, I'd consider a hundred percent alcoholic. They might not consider it, but they all struggled with this. And, you know, I had really big dreams as a kid. Like I knew there was something inside of me that like knew that I was going to live the life of my dreams. I didn't know what that meant. When I was like a little kid, I always thought that I was going to be in sports and I always was really excelled at the sports I played. Um, but then as I got to, to high school, I started to feel like the need to fit in. And my way to start fitting in was to what's when I found uh, drinking and starting to party on the weekend. And there was something about it, man. There was something like that. I just it was this excitement. And that's what I always come back to with with what people are searching for. I believe it's sometimes or I know I was as far as like doing like drugs and, and drinking is this excitement for life, this yeah. feeling that like we're going all in and we're having this big party. We're having this big moment and we love this feeling that it's giving us. So immediately I really got like into in high school that that feeling of of the party, the feeling of the weekend. You know, I still would do well in school, but I, I found myself like I just couldn't wait to go drink. Like even yeah. at 16 yeah. year 16 years old, all my friends were like, dude, what like why do you just want to go drink all the time? I was like, I don't know, man. Like it just feels like great. And so like at 16 years old, I'd be drinking like full pints of vodka to myself going out with my friends. And it, it didn't make it, it didn't make any sense to, to them. But I was like, oh, yeah, it's it's whatever. And I could kind of handle it. But I would spend nights like puking yeah. in my house. And do you were the only one. Of, were you the only one kind of doing that? Or were your friends kind of participating, too? Or was or were you just taking so, it to the extreme more than they were? I say I was probably just taking it. I was more into it. Like I was yeah. more excited about it. Um, you know, my friends were a couple of them probably liked smoking weed more than they liked to drink. But yeah. I was like, no, nah, I was always more of, I'm always more of like the get fucked, more fucked up and like kind of yeah. lose yourself type. And um, yeah, like I, I was definitely just a little more and I definitely took it a little further than everyone. I think that's, that's kind of just my, my nature. I always just yeah. went a little stronger. And I think knowing my, my dad's side of the family, and, and there was a few times where I, I got in some, some serious trouble and some like reprimanding. And I think this is something that, that started playing into the subconscious though. Cause my dad used to like affirm, he would tell me to be careful. He's like, Lou, I'm an alcoholic. Like your grandfather's an alcoholic. You know, you come from a long line of alcoholics, like, be careful, right? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. like, okay, shit, dad, like, why, you, <laughs> yeah. why are you affirming this into my life? And it was weird. It's a real duality because, like, my dad has his, has his drinking that, that he still hides from the family. Uh -huh. And then my mom doesn't drink at all. So it's this weird duality. Yeah, that is. And, and my mom is always, like, the, the, was very scared of it too. So this was my growing up in high school. But with this, so with like the partying and the drinking, I've always had this, I think it's my need to to fit in, but I still wanted to excel. Like I always, I still did well in school. I still was getting into honors courses. Like I wasn't yeah. letting it totally take over my life, but I was just, it became my purpose. I started, you know, I, I really believe that I could have, if I put my, and I think, this is with anyone in whatever they're passionate about. If they start really putting their full focus and attention into something, then that they can make that something really beautiful. Like I really believe if I put my full focus and attention into my basketball game and was like up every day and, and had this great purpose for it. Cause at one point I did yeah. like, if I stuck with that, you know, I could have got a scholarship to college. I, I don't know. I don't know how far I would have went, but I started having my purpose become you know, all right, let's, what are we doing this weekend? Like, and that really, um, took me through high school and I landed in, uh, Penn state university, which is probably one of the biggest party schools in the, in the country. And, um, 
that just seemed to obviously continue. Join the fraternity was doing the the, the fraternity lifestyle of. Yeah, I think um, some of the photos on your website I I, I looked at, uh, y'all were like shotgunning some natural ice, and I was I was like, yeah, <laughs> old, we, the the natty ice man, that was a throwback for for me too. Seeing that on there, it's like, oh uh, man, and that's kind yeah. of the but is that that's kind of the college. I feel, and I don't know, man, I'm not in college. I'm way past college. Never even, I never went to a big college or anything, but it seems, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were there firsthand, uh, it seems to be that, um, you know, that is a very um, normalized kind of social part of college is just getting fucking hammered and just partying down. And obviously, you know, a, a, a lot of, to, you know, to their credit, a lot of kids um, or young adults are, are, are trying to maintain and, and get good grades and stuff too. But it, that hand in hand with that, it's about just partying down and, and wilding out. Um, it was that, is that a fair statement, I guess, in your experience? That's, yeah, that's a hundred percent, 110%, especially in the, um, uh, probably a little more so in the fraternity sorority lifestyle. I think it's just kind of more of the, maybe the, the alpha male ego and just like the, I don't know what it is, but you yeah, are yeah. on the on the head with big party schools and, and colleges. Like it's about getting fucked up, drinking. Like you know, there's a plan for we have people coming over on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. It, there's probably <laughs> I remember in college when you're drinking like literally six to seven nights, like every night, and those 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 nights that you can't even like go to sleep because like you're you then you like start bodies like literally physically addicted to feeling yeah, yeah. alcohol to actually go to sleep. So. It's great. It, yeah, college was college was a it was a lot, it was a lot of fun. Like of course, like it's always fun in the yeah, moment. Yeah. Um. But again, like I would take things too far. Like I had a nickname, like Liquor Lou. Like I would just <laughs> like when, when when we were drinking liquor for some reason, beer probably I could I could handle a little more. But once you once you got the liquor in, we'd we'd have these day long parties, and it's like <laughs> you know pre gaming with just shots in our in our room and then going out at like 12 p.m. We have this whole huge day party and you know wake up the next morning there's like a 10 hour gap of not remembering like or more than that gap yeah. of just not remember anything and that, and that was normal like you said it's really socially normal in college and that kind of just fuels the fire yeah it's almost like uh kind of a square if you're not doing that i would think you know in in, in certain in certain um Certain groups, I guess. I mean, I'm exactly. sure there's groups too that are thinking the opposite. They're like, man, those fucking people are jet. Look at them. That's all they're doing is part. I'm not going to do that. You know, so I guess it goes both ways to be fair. But uh, at the same time, yeah, it does. Like I, 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 I think about that, about, you know, my kids are young now, but uh, who knows how, how it will change as it, uh, as it evolves, you know? Yeah, man. Um, Let me ask you this real quick. Uh, let, let's kind of stop right there. And uh, I had a I had a listener who wrote a great email in, and I've heard this a lot. And let, let's touch on this before we move forward after after kind of your college days. And because uh, I think it's it's uh, it's it's actually relatable to kind of what we're just talking about. And it's kind of focused around moderation. Like, is it possible, right? And so this is from Jay, and he he writes in and he says, uh, "Your podcast focuses almost exclusively on pure abstinence." In particular, I've heard you and Rich Roll and others say moderation isn't possible. I want to understand further, do you think moderation isn't possible for any drinker or for you in particular? Do you have any guests or certain episodes where you speak to those who have successfully moderated? Um, I really believe for those who had a low bottom, it, it is impossible to moderate. So basically what he's saying, and he says, uh, what are your thoughts? Thanks again. So Jay, first of all, thanks for writing in. We appreciate uh, the question. I think it's a, a very valid question. I think a lot of people ask themselves this. Um, let's start with you, Lou. Like, what is your take in your personal experience on moderation? And and what would you kind of uh, speak to on that question? I would say before my, I had a, a pretty big life shift. Before the shift, I would say like, okay, I'm gonna take it easy tonight, and um, you know, only have a couple drinks. And it, it worked out sometimes. Like if I had something the next day, and I really had to come, like slow down, yeah, it worked out. But I think it depends what you're moder what you're moderating, because I really. 
I, I was so addicted more to like the big fun and the big party yeah. that I was planning my life around that. And I knew like that, that I didn't, I don't want to moderate. Like it, it doesn't, that's not the point of what I'm excited about. I'm not excited about moderating. And I think my story might be a little somewhat maybe different in that. Like when I was even towards before I stopped drinking, like I was never, I wasn't someone that I needed to be drink like I post college, like I needed to be drinking like all through the week. It was just, it was, and I got into a different kind of drug use after this, but it, it, it was the weekend and it was the big yeah. party. Yeah. So I like to go all in. So for me, once, once I shifted my, like kind of my life and I even, I remember tasting like just like a sip of like alcohol and it's just like, I don't even, I don't even want this. Like you just don't even, <laughs> yeah. I, I got to a point where it's like, yeah. it doesn't interest me. I'll go out with people that are drinking and it's like, no, I love, I love feeling all of life. So. Yeah. That's, I, that's so funny, <sighs> man. I, I remember you just brought it brought back a memory. That's so, so crazy to me is I remember puking in my mouth, vodka, like puke, like I, I was getting ready to go do my, my thing that day. And, and, uh, and I was, I was down in, I used to stir it up with some uh, some Red Bull and like a big ass McDonald's cup or whatever, like a whole <laughs> bottle of it. I, and I would just face it right there through the straw. And uh, I remember puking it up in my mouth. And this is to your point of not even wanting it, not even wanting to taste it. Like it was fucking disgusting to me. I didn't want it, but I wanted that high. I wanted to escape that reality and get that feeling so I could go about and do whatever it was that I was was getting into. Um, but yeah, puked it and then and then and then spit it out you know, puked obviously, and then went back and had to finish off the rest of it because I didn't want to leave any, leave any left. You know what I mean? And like the madness of that is just number one, it's fucking disgusting. Number two, um, that was, I was fine with that. I thought that was like, all right, cool. You know, but you also bring up a good point in the fact that, um, when we, when we kind of touched on moderation is that, um, you, you kind of, you almost give yourself a reason to justify it. Like if you have something to do tomorrow, so you can justify the fact that you don't really have a problem. Does that make sense? Like, it's like, well, I have this to do tomorrow. So I guess I can moderate a little bit. I won't drink 10 beers tonight. I only drink, you know, four or five. And yeah. I'll, that way I can get up and do my thing tomorrow. Um, moderation. I, I don't know. For me, it's impossible. And I'm definitely not going to, uh, I'm not going to give it a shot because I'm too scared and and I I know where that goes, and it sounds like for you it also led into other other drugs too. Is that right? Yeah. So the the search for the the party led me, I guess, towards the latter half of college. I started really getting into the um, electronic music and like house music, and I've always been I've always been someone who loves to to dance and just kind of let loose and just feel my body like that. And once I found this music. I became obsessed. I really just was fell in love. It gave me this like new feeling of this excitement. I just, I've always just loved different kinds of music throughout my life. Yeah. And with that, with that scene comes, uh, comes different types of drugs. And so I was like, yeah, you know, you go to a rave, you, you take ecstasy, like you take MDMA, Molly. And I remember the first time, like I f took what was supposed to be like pretty good, uh, MDMA. And it was this huge event at our college and it was with all of our best, my best friends. It was, it, it was like the stadium was packed and I was sitting there in like the, the bottom floor. And I remember when it first like hit me and it was, it was a totally new experience. So yeah. different from, from alcohol and it it gave me this this really deep sense of love and connection and and just bliss like it was pure yeah, ecstasy. Like, can I get a right? massage? Somebody <laughs> massage me, <laughs> right? And it was it was just something like that that I that brought me this great joy that I mm -hmm. was like wow. And and I what I loved about it is that it's like wow I can remember everything on this like. Yeah. I don't have to black out. Like there's no like depression. And then the next morning, so the next morning when I woke up, I felt, I still felt good. I was like, really? wow, there's no hangover. I was like, where's this drug been my whole life? How did I miss it out on this? And yeah. So it, it, I kind of started shifting, you know, from being, you know, focused on the party with just drinking to like, okay, well, when's the next time I can do that? Like when yeah. can we do 
but 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 always though, always when you start out, you're like, I know what this is. I know that this is a this drug is a, like a drug. I mean, you know, I've done my research, so I'm gonna save it for only the special occasions. Like we'll only do it when there's another big show coming in. You know, we'll start saving it. But every time, you know, you said something like that, it never goes like that. You know, you always yeah. find a new occasion. And when I left college, you know, I started, we kind of would do that a few more times in college, which some shows, but still also do it just hanging out in our frat house because people were over late night and it's, it just became a little more regular. Yeah. And then once after college, you know, that really was still like became my focus. It's like, all right, I'm like kind of in the rave scene. Like, what are we doing this weekend? Is there a party? Is there a rave to go to? And that's when I moved out to San Diego. And that's when it really became way more habitual. Yeah. And like every, not every weekend, but I, it was always, it was more prevalent. I think it was easier for me to, to, to it was more casual in San Diego. Like I would. Did you know anybody in San Diego or did you basically just move there on, on the solo? I moved there on the solo, but I, but I found people that I went to school with that I kind of knew that were also moving there, and one person was in the like into that scene too. So we kind of connected and started going to shows and met yeah. one person else, and it kind of just started forming. And yeah, like the the thing with the thing with these uh, different from alcohol and thing with like these kind of drugs like MDMA ecstasy, you know, people take them once you know they have what can be like an amazing experience and they don't take them again and that's that's great they, they use it for this experience to feel this love and connection and, and we might get about this later like i believe we can feel these things totally naturally um and i just became i wasn't like that you know i didn't just do it once it was each weekend and when you do it like that like if people that don't know, like it sucks the serotonin so strong mm -hmm. out of your brain that afterwards it just leaves you feeling completely like lifeless and depressed and just, ah, oh, yeah. like way different than alcohol. Like, well, you constantly want to live on that, on that level, on that level of high, because it's so just one. like, I always used to tell my buddy, they'd be like, man, what is, what does ecstasy feel like? And I'd be like, man, it feels like you fucking won the lottery. Like picture yourself <laughs> that you just won the lottery and your life is the most amazing thing ever. That's pretty much what it feels like. And when you don't feel like that anymore, it sucks. You know what I mean? It sucks. Yeah. It sucks. And it's, uh, yeah, like my, that high, the first high that I got from it, I never got that again. Like it was, I kept kind of getting glimpses of it, but I would get, I started getting really paranoid when I'd be at these events, like just really kind of, yeah, just, just starting to see my life go down this road that I, as a kid who had these big dreams, who, who yeah. was really pure, I believe, uh, then going down this road, like I never would have dreamed it. And it's just started, you know, you're hanging out with people. It's like 7 a.m. Yeah. in L.A. Wow. at this at this club. There's like 55-year-olds around you, just like their eyes are just out of their minds. And you're like, is this my life in, yeah. in, in what the fuck years? Yeah, like, <laughs> what the fuck am I dealing what, with? What it, did that did that also take away? Um, kind of almost back to the golf analogy earlier is, did that take away for you the music too? I mean, because part of going to that is if you find some good music. Um, I can't dance worth the shit, but I still like to hear some good music, and yeah, it. it it takes away from that because it's all about the drug, right? Yeah. I mean, it's all about getting high. So, I mean, you, I guess you, you might enjoy it while you're high, but it, it's really becomes like the secondary focus of why you're there. You know what I mean? That's the truth. No, I, I used to like love going there for the music. And then it's like, I don't even enjoy the music until the drug kicks in. It's like, yeah, we're just waiting. Yeah. Like we're just getting there. It's like, all right, now we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And that's not the, that's, it leads down a very, slippery slope and and I found myself in it's funny though I would even when some days I wouldn't I still I still said when I would drink I still lose control of myself but it was like we shift things whenever yeah. I would do ecstasy I wanted to feel it so strong I was like no I don't even want to I'm not drinking like because yeah. I just want to feel this this drug and I don't want to like lose this feeling yeah so it, it was like a balance of like the alcohol was just starting to get me really depressed like I had a with my with my girlfriend, you know, I would, we'd go out and, and alcohol would just make me like just miserable. And like, that's why we started needing to take like ecstasy together to feel that, to feel that love. And it's yeah. just a really, it's so normal though. And I feel like it's, it's so normal for 
kids you know, in my generation, like in their, in their early twenties to be doing this each weekend and and people don't see it. And that's, I think something that I feel here to be someone of a messenger for, or even in our society in general, like people are, most people are just would are out like alcoholics. So, you know, they they like on the weekend, they're just getting drunk habitually, you have a good job, whatever, but like they just, you don't admit it or you don't have to well, it's so socially acceptable. There's a normalcy yeah. bias behind it that is just, uh, it's, it's almost unbelievable. It's so normal uh, to, to have some, some drinks. And, and not that, you know, I always say this too, like if, and you kind of alluded to this earlier in the conversation too, like if you can go have a drink or a couple drinks and, and be cool, like not everybody has a fucking problem. So I always like to say that too. But for those of us who cannot regulate that back to moderation, like it just does not work. And when it's so socially sep- acceptable, it really disguises um, the fact that many of us actually have a problem with it because it's so acceptable. It's so e- easily um, attainable. You can walk in anywhere and get it. Same with uh, drugs. I mean, it seems like drugs were sometimes when I, before I turned 21, it was easier to get drugs than it was to get alcohol. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that right yeah. there is, a, that's a huge, that's a huge sign, man. Yeah, man, that's, that is, that is the truth, man. Everyone, it, people just don't, see it and they they some people you just have to know your body that's what i want to say you have to like know your body some people can't drink coffee because they're like they freak out like you you, everyone's different so you just it's it's about knowing yourself and that's really what i think you know in in a larger picture like i believe that's what life is ultimately about because when you know yourself when you truly tap into to what I call like that, that inner truth, your purpose, your passion, yeah. then it's like the outside just happens. Like you almost don't even do anything. Yeah. I want to, I want to get into that with you too. Like that moment when, you know, that, that moment when it, it just kind of hits you, um, and, and you're, you're ready for change, I guess you're ready for something more. And you realize that, uh, that you want to take your life down a different path. Um, before we go there though, I want to, I want to just talk about this really fast because I think you brought up a great point, um, in what we were previously talking about is back to that. So you have, you have the drugs, you have the alcohol, you have the things that get you physically high. That's that, it's that excitement. Um, right next to that is, is kind of what you were saying is that that moment of, um, of, of just excitement about what are we going to do? Like we're going to party tonight. We're going to have fun. And so there's, it's almost a drug in itself, I guess is what I'm getting at. And, and when we're, when we're constantly looking to that, to the next, you know, to that weekend or that next type of thing, we, we immediately lose all concept in of like our reality that we're living in, in the moment, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? And so when we're not living like that, we're just constantly thinking about what we're going to do next, how we're going to get high. Like, that's not a fun way to live. It might be fun at first, but after a while, man, it starts to get tiring. It starts to get old. And like you said, now I'm taking, you know, this amount of drugs because I'm never going to get as high as I could in in the beginning. You know what I mean? And so what, um, like, as that kind of goes on for you, so you're living, you're living this, this life, you're going to, to raves, you know, you're, you're, you're um, getting into ecstasy, the alcohol is kind of the best. Maybe we should start a slogan like MDMA will, will help you stop drinking, right? Because you were able to stop <laughs> drinking. And I kind of I kind of experienced that too. I was able to balance both of them. But um, all right, let me shut the fuck up. I'm rambling here. What, when you hit that moment, um, talk about that, man. Take 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 us back to that place where you're just like, I've 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 had it with this, and I've, I'm ready to change. Yeah. So I always say like I don't have like this one epic rock bottom. I have some stories in my life that might as well, maybe could be should be rock bottoms, but I didn't have that like last epic rock bottom. I'd say I had like this consecutive just weekend and every weekend of these lows of just like throwing myself in a cave. And there was just one weekend, I think it was Memorial Day weekend of 2014. So not still not even that long ago, but Memorial Day weekend 2014, I just was at this this rave event in San Diego. And I we, we didn't have a scale to like actually break up all like the stuff that night. I felt I thought I was good at eyeing it, but it ended up being like it was so much, but it still wasn't I wasn't feeling it. So I took way yeah. too much 
Um, still didn't end up feeling it, but still got that. Got just it was just bad. Like it was just never fun the whole time. It was just I guess went into a paranoia. It was just like just wanted to. Ended up going home and I'm sitting there in my my bed. It's like 6 a.m. My girlfriend who actually was studying, she was studying for grad school. She didn't go out with me. I just went out with like one other friend because we were going to go to this rave. And I'm just sitting there like I can't, I'm not going to be able to sleep until who knows when. And I feeling like the complete death that I keep getting myself into and it was just like a, it was just like a whisper. I always say that it was just like whisper that came to me that was was like, why are you doing? Why do you keep putting yourself here? Like, where are like the benefits? Like, what value is this bringing into your your life? And where do you where do you see this going? It was like I finally saw like the road signs, hmm. and I just said I didn't really know what it meant. Like, I just that morning I was like, you know what? That's it. I, I'm just. I'm done with this right now. I'm, I. I can't do this to myself anymore. This is. This is too much, and I. I really believe like when we, kind of make these bigger life decisions. Like I, I believe in this. Things just start happening for us, and it was like two weeks later, and and this is a whole crazy like synchronistic story of how I even got into this meeting. But two weeks later, I. I found myself in this meeting, with um a group of entrepreneurs and I was not, I did not deserve to be in this meeting, but it, it, what it completely blew me away. Like these people were all in their twenties. They were running successful businesses. This one guy was like a millionaire, like this real estate investor, a couple life coaches, they all were doing their own thing. And I was you know, sitting there like, the the guy who just been cared about partying the past 10 years of his life like working this accounts receivable job i'm like what the fuck like where <laughs> like where am i who are these people like what what where did i miss this like yeah, how, where did I, I, how did i get here too huh? <laughs> like, yeah. um it was crazy and it was that meeting like they were all talking about like bettering, like bettering their lives bettering their businesses they were talking about like stuff that mattered and sitting around a group of men talking about that was so foreign to me. Like, you know, we, I was just talking about bullshit, you know, all that mattered in my life was bullshit. And these people were, were, were talking and thinking and living just a way different lifestyle. And it was that meeting. Like I remember sitting after that meeting, like going into reflection, it really just took a, like a, it's it stabbed me with this like a wake up call of yeah. of being like Lou that that could be you like you could have been there like this in their twenties like really crushing in life but look where you are and it was just a challenge to myself and I I I made a choice like that day once I saw this group once I got in there I was like I am I am going to start living differently like whatever those guys had like. I am going to to start living with this new, what it was at the time, I didn't say this, but I, I realized on that day, I don't think you always have to find your purpose, you have to start choosing to live with purpose. And it was that day that I chose to live with purpose because it was this complete paradigm, it was a paradigm shift of, of worlds. And I honestly, I didn't even know if I was gonna be invited back to this meeting. I thought I had nothing to offer this group, but somehow I like poured my heart out to like the guy who like started this and, and said like how deeply impacted I was by sitting around this group of people that I would love to continue coming back. And it was through this meeting and each week. So it met Fridays. This is another thing that I think you'd appreciate. It met Fridays at 6 PM. So when I first heard that, I was like, dude, I'm giving, cause I was still, I was, I gave up the ecstasy, but I was still like, going to be drinking and whatnot. Right. I, I was like, Fridays at, at 6 PM. Like, no way. Like That's my the- pre-party shit. I'm <laughs> trying. Yeah, like I'm at like a beach. I'm drinking like Margaret. It's happy hour after, after, <laughs> after work. Like yeah. when's, when do you have fun? Yeah. Anyway. So I was like, I, I put that to the side. I was like, I'm, I'm going to check this out. Cause it just seems like it's calling me. And so each, I needed to go back. So every week, instead of starting my Friday from work, after starting that with, um, instead of starting that with drinking, I'd start it in this conference room with, with people talking about bettering their lives and bettering themselves. And it just, man, I just, it was my new addiction, dude. Yeah. 
Like that well, was I, my excitement. I want to I want to stop you right there, dude, because you bring up I mean, you brought up a, a lot of good points in that, and I love that story, man, because there's there's a challenge in there, there's a wake up call, there's like there, there's all kinds of elements in there. Um, that that leads somebody to and I love that you said too, not so much about finding your purpose, but actually living it. Um, but the huge thing is routines. How many of us out there are stuck in that routine? Just like you were saying, no, it's Friday. Like I'm, I'm at the beach with the margarita. It's happy hour. Like that's what I do. Well, in order for us to get out of those types of environments that we're stuck in, it's about changing routines. And I just want to point that out. That's exactly what you, what you did, right? You changed that routine and that started, um, a new cycle or a new ball that started rolling, uh, which sounded like it, it snowballed. So, uh, I just wanted to point that out, man. I think it's super, super important. So continue on, man. Yeah, no, you, you, you hit it on the head. It, it, it snowballed. And so each Friday, you know, I'd, I'd go to this meeting, come home, I'd be feeling like, that excitement that maybe like the party or the excitement, maybe like the drug would give me. I felt that excitement for life afterwards. I was like, wow, I can't wait to to go do something tomorrow. I'd go to sleep, wake up sober, be like, oh shit, it's, it's 8 a.m. on a Saturday. I feel great. Like, I go for a run. I come back. I'm like, I just, I started, I just felt better. I started getting into reading. Like I used to never like read books, but like they, all these people were like, they read a lot of books. So I was like, all right, I'll try this. And I started trying checking on these new books, different self-help books, different philosophy books. I was like, wow, I kind of enjoy reading about this. This is, this is, you know, it was this new excitement that I just, like I said, like I'm all in. It's like, I found this just like I found MDMA for the first time. I found yeah. this and I was like, boom, let's, let's get running. <laughs> and I started transforming my life. It's like started, you know, work got better, even though I wasn't doing a job I love. Like I was coming to work with this, this greater purpose with this more of like vibrant way of being. And I was a happier person to be around. Yeah. Um, I would, even when I would go out, like I'll go out to the bar and, you know, go have to try to drink with some like friends I would, I would drinking less and I was kind of seeing this debauchery that was happening. I was like, well, was I part of, like, I understand why I used to want to get so drunk because this is just, this is stupid. So it was just, it was having, it was having this, this impact on every area of my life. And I just continued to, to move forward. And yeah. one of the biggest, um, biggest routines that I found was, was meditation through that. And, and it was meditation that really opened me up to like another shift and another transformation. Did you find in, uh, you know, with addiction relationships are, are a huge issue, many, many different parts or components, I guess, to relationships. But one of them that, that's coming to mind with this is like you were saying, you go back to the bar with some buddies and have some beers, or whatever. It just wasn't the same. Um, what's, what's kind of your thoughts and what was your experience with, those relationships that were really purely based on drugs or alcohol and, and the talk is just, it's debauchery talk. It's stupid stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's usually something most of the time of not very much substance. And if it was considered substance at the time, you probably didn't remember it much in the morning anyway. <laughs> right. So it probably didn't mean much versus sitting in this group with this other group of motivated men who are out there trying to not only better their own lives, but better the world too, and, and make a difference, live out their purpose. I mean, those relationships right there, it's like night and day. It's completely different. So was that something that really drew you um, in and, and was really able to help you overcome the need or the want to continue on in that lifestyle with drugs and alcohol? Absolutely. I mean, your environment makes you like your environment shapes mm -hmm. you like who you surround yourself with is so important. So when I started becoming seeing that debauchery and, and just kind of stepping back at the same time, actually, I, I'd made a, a decision to, to break up with my girlfriend um, and I moved out by myself and was really in this, this soul searching period of my life. I just got in this group and was kind of just finding, starting to find myself. And it yeah. was this, this really new time. And I would stay home more, like be going out less. My friends were like, dude, what's, what's going on? Like your friends are, that's the biggest thing. It's like your friends are not going to understand unless they have certain experiences. Like you're going to start losing friends and you start realizing that, the friends that you do lose through the process were are meant to you're meant to lose them and you create new relationships and, and positive relationships and I 
I I'm I'm big on this because I've I've seen it happen with my my transformation was such a, a 180 that it really happened like I don't talk to anyone from college really like all my college buddies like I haven't talked to in over a year because they're like they don't understand they don't they don't yeah. get it and they think I am just too crazy like in a way even though it's I just I feel like I'm the only sane one of them yeah do you, um, do you get the I, I just I just experienced this just over the weekend and my wife's been telling me she's like well you need to talk about it I know it's bugging you and I'm like it's not bugging me but I guess ultimately <laughs> it is bugging me so I'm talking yeah. about it again on, on the show now but um do, do you ever do you ever find like um or have you ever experienced like someone from your past um, giving you the whole bullshit of like, oh, well, you think you're better now because you don't drink or you think you're, you know, this or that is something that is just like it, it drives me crazy because it's like, no, that's not the point. I mean, but at the same time, yes, I am better. I'm not better than you, but I'm better than that lifestyle that I was fucking living before. And um, if, uh, if you want to join me, then fucking jump on board and let's be winners together. But don't sit and hate on me because I'm doing something trying to better my own life. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, that's, a, that's, oh, that's been a tough one. Um, have you, have you had any experience with that? Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Like, especially right in the beginning, because I think I was so like fresh in like the crew where people were having this, this, yeah, thinking that I was, you found this new group or something and lose like, oh, doing this thing. Yeah. And I think what it comes down to is like, you have to ask, like, if, if what you're doing, like, if your friends don't get that what you're doing is bettering for your life and they don't respect and appreciate that, then you really have to just question if, if those are the type of friends that, that you want, like yeah. just because you're not with them every night at the bar, like people grow a resentment for that. I think it's really just childish. I think it's just pre-programming mm-hmm. that we grow up with. It's still in those like high school clicks of, Oh, he's not yeah. hanging out with me. He's, <laughs> He doesn't want to party. He's found this <laughs> new group of people, like yeah. talking about books. Like I don't. Like, he's crazy. Did, like, did you know he like, reads many leather-bound books? <laughs> Unbelievable. And his house he's, smells of rich they're, mahogany. They're feeding. They're feeding him with all this crap. Like yeah. what is? What is that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Come so, get fucking you, hammered with us and let's let's yeah, lit. Yeah. Oh man, I've I've wanted to, this is this is a little I want to do some like goof like YouTube yeah. video on like the difference of of when you see it like in person of of like the person that's like sober and wanting to like have a great life and then the idiots that are talking about them behind their back just like yeah. smashing beer cans on their heads. <laughs> that's a little tangent, but it's just so classic. ridiculous when yeah. you actually like look at it. Yeah. No, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. It's just like we want to. You know, we want to better ourselves. It's nothing. It's nothing uh, to do with with anybody else, really. Obviously, maybe our family. Like in my case, my family and stuff. Of course, I want to make them proud and do that. But ultimately, it's for me and and wanting to live out the purpose. Just as kind of you were you were talking about. Um, let's um, let's kind of jump into into today's. Unless you did you were, were you done? I'm sorry. I feel like I kind of cut you off there. No, uh, no. Like, no, let's go. Okay, so let's uh. Let's kind of jump into today, man. I, and I appreciate your honesty, man, in in uh, in sharing some of your stories, sharing some of the things. I think uh, I think you have some great um, some great points and and really some great experience in this. And I, I'm sure that there's many people out there listening who are going to be able to relate relate to to your story too. Take us um, take us now to to kind of transitioning through that you're you're working through this group you're finding this new life now now you're almost addicted to this new sense of of positivity which is a, a great thing in itself um where does that lead you uh on that path from then until up until today sure so like i i previously mentioned and this is a big part of why I'm here today is I found meditation and I only got into meditation as just another thing, just another, Oh, this is what successful people are doing. Try this out. And it was, it was through meditation and I wasn't doing it a lot. I wasn't that consider myself good at it. And this was why I, what, with what happened to me was so intense for me. So I found myself, it was probably seven months after joining this group I, it was, I was crushing it. I got a promotion at work. Uh, life was just, life was just going great. And I found myself in New Year's. It was, I, the last day I've ever dr- got drunk was New Year's of 2015. And it was like the two days afterwards, I like spent some time with, with two friends in Palm Springs. And I was, I was by myself about to come back to San Diego. And I decided 
to go ahead and, and take a hike by myself because I was feeling really great. Like it was, I was, I had a night to kind of get over the, even though I didn't get that drunk, like I had a few different kind of drinks and I could still feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't like that fe- in the morning. I didn't like the feeling of like not being with, and yeah, you might appreciate this. I remember the January 1st, 2015, I was sitting around, I was at a coffee shop and I was just start journaling but I could barely journal because I was a little, I was just feeling a little woozy. Yeah. And I was seeing this family like really enjoying their time out there. Yeah. And I was like, man, like if I'm ever this, like I don't ever want to be like this for my family. Like if I, like yeah. this is me, like as a father, like and I can't enjoy the time with my kids because I'm like groggy, like that's bullshit. And well, especially so going back to your, your childhood too. And your, and your dad being so open about like, Hey, I'm an alcoholic. Like you need to be careful. You know what I mean? Like a lot of, yeah. a lot of, a lot of parents don't do that because they haven't came to the realization that <laughs> they're alcoholics themselves. So, I mean, you, you kind of had that, I'm assuming in your ear, a lot of, a lot of the time going through this too. Absolutely. You know, even like in my ear consciously and sub, you know, who subconsciously, I believe that was, that was playing out too. Yeah. But anyway, it was the it was the next day. Like I had a sober night. What didn't drink. The next day, I go on this hike, and I and I was like, oh, you know, I'm gonna go meditate on this mountain. And in, in, it was I was in Joshua Tree. I'm gonna go meditate up this um, this mountain. And and I go through it, and I get into these really deep meditations, like that I've never experienced before, and it feels like really really good. And I get up to the top. And it's, it's a very long story up this mountain, but I get up to the top and I'm like just feeling, I'm feeling high. Like I, you know, I know what it feels like to be on ecstasy and I'm starting, I'm like feeling that I'm feeling this and I, I didn't take, you know, take anything. Yeah. And I start writing in my journal just about these emotions, about these feelings, about the meditations. And I, it's, it's like I had this, this moment where I felt like I was being asked if I really wanted all that life has in store for me. And it was, it was in that moment. It's like, I, I knew I, I did, I was doing really well, but it's like, do you want to go to the next level? I was like, yeah. what, what does that mean? But at that moment, I knew what I had to fully let go of. It was like, I knew what I had to commit to. And I, it was to totally stop drinking. And I was standing up this mountain. I was like, oh my God, like, no, could I, could I do that? Like, no, how could how would I go, how would I go out and actually socialize? Like the, what am I going to do? Like, I don't know, yeah. but it was like a now or never. It's like, Hey, you make this choice now. Like, so I actually wrote, I wrote in my journal, a note to my future sons or daughters. And I, I, I wrestled over if I was going to do it. And I said, you know what, if you know, you're going to do this for them. And I said on, on this day, like I, like I wrote like Lewis Redmond, like stop drinking. And I remember I, I closed the journal and it was like the like the greatest feeling of ecstasy and <laughs> and love. Like it was this opening. I was crying. I was just yeah. screaming, "Thank you!" And it was just this beautiful. What what I what I figured out later was this spiritual like experience of of this this love that was coming out of me. And it was that shift that really started. Um, you know, I got back to my car and I'm like, shit, what the, f- what did I just, what did I just sign yeah. up for? I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> what did I just commit to? <laughs> commit to stop drinking my whole yeah. life? Oh my God. I'll, I'm going to take this one day. At a t- I'm going to take this one day. I feel great right now. Yeah. I, f- I feel like I'm on ecstasy without taking anything. I am just going to r- take this one day at a time. And sure enough, the next couple of days I had similar, these, ex- I have had these, some of these experiences like that were similar and they kept kind of amplifying yeah. and this is you know, a really long story, but I, through these experiences, I felt that like I was really just meant to do more and, and really called to like a higher purpose. And I, I made a decision that I was going to, to quit my job, but it was like in a way that was, uh, I just got a promotion. I just got, I just won like the best employee award. Like it didn't make any sense to yeah. anyone. So I quit with, with, I quit through an email and I quit with, uh, I poured my heart out on this email explaining what happened or explaining that I was leaving to, 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 I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had no plans. I just felt this love and I felt this purpose and this mission that, that I was being called to just go for. And I quit my job with no two week notice, no money saved. And like I said, no plans. And it was like, you mentioned the, the, the cops and the suicide before. So it's when I did this, 
and I put my phone on airplane mode because I did it from my my house. Yeah. And people, it was so crazy, like what I sent out. It was just so different than people. People just didn't expect it from me that they thought that my email was actually a suicide letter. So wow. they sent the cops to my house and I'm, I'm sitting there like I'm literally like feeling higher, 20 times higher than any drug I've ever taken because I'm just it's bursting with this love. It's yeah. beautiful. And the cops come by and they're like, are you uh, are you the one sending emails to your company, like talking about a higher calling? And I was like, oh, man, sh- this is this is serious. Like if people think you want to like kill yourself. And I was yeah. like, wow, like I, that could not be any farther from what I'm feeling right now. And yeah, so the, I quit my job without a, without any plans. And it, it was through that, it was through that doing that, that I've, that I've been proven so hard, like how supported we are when we step out into the unknown, when we st- follow that our, our heart and that inner guidance that we are so supported so flash forward it's about this was this was a little over two years ago so january 2015 and man i've just it's been a blessed journey it's yeah. it's been a wild wild journey but i you know it was a lot of still soul still figuring a lot of things out and I, you know, through that, I felt like I need to write a book on this, all this, this transformation. I was like, I need to write a book about where I was, the steps I took, like what happened and what ultimately led me to just jump off into this unknown. So a month after I quit my job, that's kind of what I started to do. And by writing and figuring out life, I've just continued to, to be led to, to greater, greater levels of, of fulfillment. That's awesome, man. That's crazy. That's just, that's a, that's a crazy story. I mean, how often, uh, how often does that happen? And I think Lou, you'd probably agree with me on this. Uh, those out there listening, we're not saying go today and quit your job and, uh, and hope that <laughs> because everyone's experience is different, but yeah. at the same time, um, the fact that you were able to capture that and that's why in the, in the, in the 12 step programs and, um, just in, in general, I think, it's so stressed on having a spiritual awakening. Like this is a, for me, okay, I'll speak for myself. I know for me, I had my own spiritual awakening and that is ultimately what changed my mindset uh, in order to pursue a life of sobriety. Because back to your earlier point of the fact, how many of us out there have thought, man, if I quit drinking, how in the hell am I going to live? What am I going to do? How, how, how am I going to have fun? Like, how am I going to function? How am I going to go watch a game and, and, and drink a Coke and eat some peanuts? Like how, like that does not sound fun to somebody who's lived a life of, of being high and intoxicated, uh, in order to, uh, in order to have some fun, I guess. Um, I think it's super interesting too, that you were, you, you pointed out that you basically felt like 20 times higher on this emotional state versus, you know, being on ecstasy or or any alcohol or anything like that. Like that's a, that's pretty interesting to me. And you wrote it, you rode the wave, right? I mean, started writing and just let that, let that shit just flow. I've, I've read it, man. And that's, that's it. Once you find that connection, that higher connection and, and, you know, through what I've, I didn't really, I didn't really know what was happening to me at the time, but it was doing my research afterwards and figuring yeah. out that these, these, these openings and these spiritual openings and this, this connection, it's, we're meant to feel ecstasy. Like we're meant to feel bliss. We're meant to feel that excitement that drugs are a shortcut to, that they can glimpse, glimpse you into, uh, t- into what I believe the God essence or the universe or whatever you want to believe in. It's drugs are kind of like a shortcut, but they're, they're going to lead you they're, they're putting the yeah. the light, they're going to burn it too bright and it's going to burn out. And that's what you can yeah. cultivate naturally through, I believe, meditation. So, uh, so let's, uh, let, let's, let's wrap this thing up in just a couple of minutes. I want to be uh, respectful of your time. Uh, thanks for coming on today, man. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's been, uh, it's been great to hear your story and it's, it's very motivational, very inspirational. Obviously that's, uh, that's what you're doing these days. You mentioned your book. Um, so let's, um, uh, well, first and foremost, tell us what you're doing today to kind of stay on point in your recovery and, and help you stay sober. And then uh, tell us also um, a little bit about the book and where we can find that at and where we can contact you at, Lou. Sure. Yeah. I'd, I'd say to, to keep my mind right is just to make sure I'm surrounding myself with the right people, like know who I'm letting into my life and meditation. 
And that's been my two, like my two focuses. And it's through that, that, uh, yeah, I don't even, I used to really think about it a lot right after I, I stopped drinking, but now it's yeah. like, I, I barely even, it's not even something I really think about that much, which is, which I'm super blessed to have kind of moved to this point, which is, which is incredible. Like I really, you know yeah. what it is? I got proud of being sober. Like yeah, I used to not be proud. I used yeah. to not be proud. Like I used to feel like I was like an outcast, but like, fuck, I'm proud. Like, yeah. like I own my life and I own who I am. I own every emotion I have. And once you can get proud of it, that's like a shift. That's a game. That's a mindset shift. So dope, dude. I oh, I talk about that often too. Like I feel like it is straight gangster to be sober to me. Like I feel like <laughs> an OG, just like the cool. I used to think it would be so squared. Like why would you want to be like that? But now it's like, man, it's so it's so like whack to me to be a dope fiend. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. lifestyle just sucks. Plain and simple. Um, if so, if if someone wanted to look into meditation more too. Uh, cause I, I'm guessing even myself, I mean, uh, it's, it's an interesting thing and, uh, it's, it ta- I think it's a process. It's something that you can start out, um, and do for a couple of minutes and then, and then kind of grow with it as you grow into it. Uh, where would somebody start? Like where, where could you recommend that maybe they might, uh, is there an app or is there something maybe they can do like a little session that you do? Like, do you take a couple minutes and like, how does that kind of work? Sure. Uh, a great app for beginners if they want to like just get a taste of, of it, what it's about is, is Headspace and they have like a 10 day kind of takes you yeah. through like 10 minutes a 10 day. Like I've, I think for beginners, that's a, always a good place to start. Um, but it's, it's not getting down on yourself. Um, it's not like if you miss a day feeling like you're, you're doing it, um, you're not doing it right or I think feeling like you're just a right way to meditate is the biggest problem. It's like you can close your eyes. If you're listening to this right now, you can close your eyes. You can take four breaths in and out and you've just meditated. Like there's not this big, big process, but it's just, it's just spending some time to yourself each day and, and, and breathing and, and focusing on your breath is the base of meditation. Now I would say definitely start with some guided meditations um, on YouTube, I have some on my website that can kind of take your focus into different places and, and guided meditations can kind of help us help us with so many different things and, and find different things within ourselves. Lou's book is called Find Your Truth, A Modern Day Story of Letting Go of Addiction and Finding Life's Purpose. I'm going to put it in the show notes so it'll be on the show notes page. Um, and you'll be able to find that on that sober You can also, uh, find more information at Lou And Lou, if anyone wants to reach out to you directly or, or get in contact with you with any questions about the book or anything else, uh, where could they do that? Sure. They can, uh, you can just email me, uh, Lou L O U at Lou And, uh, if you on Instagram, I'm uh, Lou speaks truth. Lou, thanks, my friend. Thanks for joining us today, man. Uh, Congratulations to you too, man, on on, uh, just over two years of sobriety and uh, a huge life change. It's awesome to see you out there spreading the good word and uh, really helping to to change people's lives, man. Thank you. Same to you, Shane. Thanks so much for, uh, for having me. Thanks again to our sponsors, Foundations Recovery Network, DXRX Medical, as well as Sober Nation. You can help support us on Patreon by going to thatsoberguide.com. Click on the right-hand side panel. There's a button on there. And uh, you can become a patron, support the show. Or you can also leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, Really appreciate that.